Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for the rational perspective on Reading 3, Chelsea 4. Yes, a goal fest at the Majeski Stadium on this Sunday afternoon. And it looked like at points Chelsea and Reading were trying to emulate uh, the Madrid derby that happened only a couple of days ago, that 7-3. Um, I think... Mostly obviously positive, you know, 4-3, it's another win, it's another 90 minutes in the tank. I think the most uh, we can take away from this game in terms of positive and in terms of the most interesting thing that I think a lot of us will be debating is Ross Barkley and Mason Mount. The two performances from the two English midfielders that really were the stand-up performers of the game. Uh, Ross Barkley playing in the first half and then Mason Mount in the second half, both finding the net, both having a massive influence. And I'm sure we'll be giving Frank Lampard a big decision to make as we head into the season. Um, but I think, you know, firstly, the interesting thing was that team lineup. Um, I spoke in the last video about how I thought that the starting lineup for that, the 4 2 3 1, was going to be very similar to what Frank goes with. I don't think I've changed my mind too much on that, but it was just interesting to see that Frank would change up the side. And there was a lot of people, you know, getting irate about it and, and losing their heads as, as usual, usual online about it. And I just thought, you know, you've got to put it in perspective. Lampard will want to see all of his squad. And as well, we've got three games this week. You know, we've got today's game. And then we've got uh, Salzburg on Wednesday and then München Gladbach next week. So it's the, I think in terms of preseason, it's the most amount of games you've had in, in, a, in a seven day period. So uh, for Frank, I'm sure it's about rotation, it's about getting minutes in the legs. And I actually think today's game, if you take some of the negatives of maybe the slow start within that first half, I think that Frank will be able to maybe whittle down that squad a bit more, get answers about who he trusts, who he won't trust um, in his squad. And I think that was probably the key thing. Even if you're having negatives in a game, as I've said before, pre-season, it's a positive. You know, you want to be learning these things. And I actually think that that will benefit Frank um, as we move closer to that uh, all-important opening game at Old Trafford. Um, so, yeah, the slow start uh, was, a, was a bit worrying. I think... Just in the sense that with those players who, you know, have a chance starting to make an impression, I look at the likes of, you know, Bakayoko who appeared in that opening few minutes to, to not be able to complete a, a pass. Um, it wasn't a d dynamic midfield, was it? You know, Kovacic and Jorginho compared to Drinkwater and Bakayoko, it just doesn't offer you the same dynamism and, and, and quick movement going forward and smart play. And unfortunately, I think for both of them, um, as predicted, even though I think drink, drink water did did okay as the half went on, I just don't think are obviously at that, the level of the other central midfielders we've got. But I was thinking about you know I think one of them will stay just in terms of squad depth, and I think that most likely will be drink water. But I think especially back Yoko, I'm sure the club will be looking to get a loan move or maybe even a permanent move in the coming days. But we did fall behind uh, early on, and that goal itself, you know. I, Losing the ball and then, you know, Reading, who I thought were really good on the break. They had a lot of pace and they really did uh, use that pace well in that first half. And falling behind, it was, it was a good finish, a good chip over Caballero, who was in goal, um, taking the captain's armband today. Um, but then we stepped it up a bit and I think, you know, getting the ball out to Pulisic, Barkley, trying to get the ball into Giroud's feet um, and especially as well Kennedy. And, and we started to move move the ball a bit quicker, get our fullbacks involved in the game. And I think this is especially down to Ross Barkley, who scored an absolute weldy of a free kick. It was right central, bang, outside the box. And uh, Alonso and Barkley both stepped up. And I did favour maybe Alonso because, of course, scored free kicks for Chelsea before. But what a free kick from Barkley. And it really did summarise his first half performance, which wasn't only that free kick. It was his all-round play. He looked... Uh, he looked quick, he looked sharp, he he wanted the ball, he looked like he was having a lot of fun out on that pitch, and he looked like he really wanted to stake his claim and say to, to say to his manager, I want to be your number 10, or I want to be in your starting 11 for the season. And I think this is really what we hoped Ross would bring to us when we when we bought him from Everton, you know, the quick movement, trying to uh, spread the play whenever he got the ball, looking out wide to find Pulisic or, or Kennedy. And, uh, you know, he nearly set up Kennedy with a goal himself and, and really nice player in the box, quick thinking. And Barkley really did stand out and has been one of the standout players. And especially off the back of that goal he scored against Barca, massive uh, moment for Barkley. Of course, Kennedy, who going from a place that I think most of us um, 
thought would he be nowhere near the squad. He may get himself an unlikely uh, place in our first team squad. A lovely finish um, into the bottom corner, uh, which uh, deceived the keeper. I think it may have had a deflection on it, but past 2-1 up and that's a massive moment for him and if he keeps working hard I think Frank will give him that that chance in the squad he I don't think he'll be a starter but doing stuff like what he's been doing in preseason and getting the goal today and being influential will do him no harm so I was happy with Kennedy as well then we moved into the second half where there was a host of changes we went into that uh, diamond again uh, the one we saw against St. Patrick's in that first half which I thought was really positive giving a 445 to both uh, um Mitchie and Tammy Abraham um, and the big star of the second half in relation to Barkley was Mason Mount um, picking up the ball and sort of I think uh, Tammy running forward he cut the ball back I don't think it was intended for Mount but Mount picked it up took a touch I knew exactly what he wanted to do with it top corner bang another goal to Majeski. I think Mount as well you know he got the second goal as well which was quite lucky and mistaken really it was the easiest happen ever but he like Barkley so influential and you know taking the ball by the horns really really making himself known in that game taking the game by the scruff of the neck and you know I've spoken before about the the goals we need from midfield and both Barkley and Mount need to offer that especially without Ruben who we probably won't have back to October. You know, and as that second half was going on, you're thinking, can we get both Barkley and Mount in the team? You know, it probably would mean that Mount would have to shift over to the right or left, but maybe Frank will try it in one of the last two preseason games. Going to some of the negatives, uh, Morrison's equaliser in the second half and Bulldogs goal in the second half, too easy, especially from set pieces. Uh, Reading set pieces were really good, but the marking, the non-existent marking uh, for the equaliser was just too easy. And for a club like Chelsea, it just cannot be happening. There seemed to be no communication with who was supposed to be marking Morrison. I don't know if it was supposed to be Tammy or Dave. You know, if, if we're going to be doing that against the championship side, especially, you know, some of the teams were playing uh, right at the start of the season, you're going to get punished. You just are. And uh, for Frank, that is something he needs, obviously, to look at. The communication of whose responsibility it is, you know, it's just basics, but... Those are things that are quite concerning as well. As I said at the start of Goal Fest, conceding three goals against the championship side, you know, it is preseason, so I'll allow that. Um, but I think the, the manner in which the goals, especially uh, the second and third goal, came about um, just sloppy that hopefully will be rectified as we get close to the season. But, you know, these are what preseason games are, are for. Um, I think, you know, as well, just small things, uh, Tammy and Mitchie and, and Giroud. Uh, Giroud had a great chance from a Barkley ball in the first half um, that you would have backed Giroud to score all day uh, from a lovely set piece. But none of them were able to get on the score sheet, but I think Tammy actually was the best in terms of his link-up play again. Uh, chesting the ball down, bringing other players into play. You know, he did set up inadvertently maybe that goal for Mount. And I think that Tammy... All round, I think, probably had the better performance out of all the three strikers that played, in my personal opinion. We are close now to the start of the Premier League season. The final two uh, preseason games against Salzburg and Mönchengladbach next week. Um, very exciting to see how the team shapes up. And as we've continued to discuss and try to get closer to understanding what Frank's team is going to look like... Um, it's it's interesting, and I think the biggest positive, of course, Ross Barkley and Mason Mount. Who is your man? Who do you think played better? You know, because they both got forty five minutes. Ross or Mason Mount. Uh, so let me know your opinions in the comments below on that. But that's it for the video, guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the game in a whole. Everything I've spoken about, the positives, the negatives. Let me know your opinions. Who should be starting at Old Trafford in a couple of weeks' time? So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Follow me on Twitter, at Son of Chelsea, and I'll see you again. Mm -hmm.